The information expressed in the following podcast is intended for educational purposes only and was created by and belongs solely to Believe Limited and the Flow podcast and does not necessarily reflect the views of our sponsors. Please speak to your healthcare provider before making any medical decisions. Hello and welcome to Flow. I'm Jessica here with Sarah Watson, sex therapist, and we want to know, how's your flow? Welcome once again to Flow. This is season two, episode two in February of 2022. And I am so excited to talk about PMS, AKA on this episode, the great rage. Before we introduce our wonderful conversationalists, Sarah, I gotta ask, how's your flow? I'm feeling okay today. Not as crampy and awful and ragey as we discussed in our conversation. (laughs) So feeling okay. How is yours? Hey, to every season, right? It Mm -hmm. changes. It's always changing. Right now, I'm luteal, so I'm good. I'm just taking a lot of cold showers, Mm -hmm. not just because of, like, the hormone spike. There's a time where my body can do that. I can handle more intensity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's going on here? Yeah, But I'm preparing for, I know what's coming next. What always comes next after this wonderful luteal phase is the great PMS. Um, Mm -hmm. And we're going to talk about it. Today, we're going to talk about it with some wonderful conversationalists. We're going to talk about the time in a monthly cycle formerly known as premenstrual syndrome. But it wasn't always called that, right? Like back in the day, de- back in cave human days, they didn't say it's premenstrual syndrome. Mm-hmm. Right. So it wasn't really until the 80s where it was more of a popular term, thanks to Family Circle. There was right. an article. um, printed in Family Circle magazine in the 80s that coined that term. So we were, what did they call it before then? We'll have to do more research to figure out. Or maybe we didn't call it anything. I don't know. Before my time. Yeah. Yeah, it was just like another time of reproductive health happening. We'll, we'll, We'll consult some historians today. Right now, let's get into it with our conversationalist. We have Flo's creative director, Amy Board, and comedian, pain pod writer and director, Mel Forrest. I mean, get ready for a great conversation on rage. I mean, on PMS. Coming up right after this quick break. This ad is brought to you by Von Vendi, Von Willebrand Factor Recombinant. My name is Nicole, and my deciding factor is making my voice heard. To hear the backstory, drop by Von Vendi. That's V-O-N-V-E-N-D-I dot com slash patient dash stories. Welcome to Flow. I was legit so excited to wake up this morning to know that I would get to speak with you three menstruators about PMS. Wonderful. I'm going to let you everyone introduce themselves. We're going to say our names and how long we've been menstruating. We'll get to the enjoyable question, how's your flow? I'm Jessica. I've been menstruating for 24 years. I'm Sarah. I've been menstruating. I was just doing the math. I'm like, wait a second. That's a great question. <laughs> um, probably twice, uh, 25 years. 25 years. Oof. I'm Mel, and I have been menstruating for 21 years. So pour one out for my menstruation. (laughs) And I'm Amy, and I haven't done the math, but it was since I was in seventh grade. So decades. Decades. (laughs) That's my number. (laughs) Decades. So a lot of collective experience, like combined then, we four are offering you know, eons of menstrual experience. How's everyone's flow right now? Just to get into the flow flow. I am currently menstruating. It's great. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) How about you, Sarah? I am not um, feeling a little PMS-y. So it's a great, great episode for us and personally for me today. I'm on the precipice. I won't, I won't menstruate. I have an IUD. So I just got to the you know, I don't know, three-year mark with that bad boy. And so I won't menstruate, but I will have PMS, which we can talk about, but I'm right on the precipice, man. 
It's coming. I am on a new journey because I haven't been, I was on uh, Lolo for the last year, so I haven't had a period, but now I just went off it and I am feeling it now. (laughs) (laughs) But no period yet. Nope. So I guess uh, eternal PMS right now. <laughs> oh my God, Mel. And so that's, that's, you're going to be so great in this conversation. You're going to be like a whole new bag. Uh huh. It's perfect. How long, how long has it been since you've gone off of it? Uh, a week and a half. Okay. Oh, wow. So it's Fresh. now I'm re- like, it was good, but I've got some time, but now I'm starting to, it's ch- shifting now. Well, golly. I mean, my next question question was going to be, how can we all put what our experience of PMS is into one word? But yours is eternal, Mel? That's a terrible (laughs) word to add to PMS. (laughs) Just right now, I'm preparing for it to be, because I'll be off of re, you know, figuring out my cycle. So I feel like it'll be a lot of PMS in the next couple of months. <laughs> Is there any other word from before you were on this medication that could speak to your experience of PMS when it first started? Exhausting. Just exhausting. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm going to, I'm going to go with annoying. <laughs> annoying. I'm going to go with inconsistent. Mm. It just, it's always surprising. Just very inconsistent. Mm -hmm. I was going to say something similar, but like the word that came to mind was, and it's not a descriptor, but a roller coaster because you just don't know, you know, could be fine. Could be terrifying. All right. So let's dive right in. Yeah. (laughs) We're just go. I'm going there. Right. Like, yeah. But I mean, sometimes roller coasters are fun. Is your, is the terror of your PMS ever fun, Sarah? Probably not, okay. to be honest. No, it gets me in trouble sometimes too, I think. Yeah. Uh, how does, what is the primary terror that shows up for you? The feels? terror is my mood, right? Mm. The terror is mm. not really recognizing while I'm, why I am ragey. Uh, I call it ragey, you know, where I'm kind of sassy, kind of frustrated, but it's like, I can't figure it out. And then I'm like, oh, I need some chocolate. And then it clicks. Then I'm like, oh. Right, you're PMSing because I like Amy have an IUD as well, so I'm not going to get to menstruation, but I definitely still get those symptoms from before, and so I don't. It doesn't make sense to me until I need chocolate, and then I'm like, oh, that's why mm. I've been such a nightmare to the people around me. <laughs> mm. Cacao is powerful medicine. Ooh, yes. <laughs> my favorite, my favorite. <laughs> All right, for with our panel, let's let's throw some more symptoms and experiences in there. How does PMS show up for you primarily, Amy? I think the fatigue is very unique and I I I think it has just never been the same. I've never had you know, oh, you get this, you get this, you get this, and then, you know, it's done. So it's, it, you know, it's different every single month, every single season. And obviously, you know, my birth control journey has been, like everybody really, um, has been robust and <laughs> different. And so it's just never felt the same. <clears throat> it's hard to plan. I, and I, I think I've said this on the podcast before. I have. Ju- I am 41 years old, legitimate in a fourth decade of life. And I have just recently started, since flow, I think actually documenting A, my schedule and my my PMS symptoms and like when do they start just so I can get an idea. And it's, I, it sounds so dumb, but it's it's helped a little bit to make me feel less crazy. And, you know, it, it kind of, it goes in, it's like, it's all the same things. I used to get, you know, pretty intense headaches. They were debilitating in a way and the fatigue was crazy. And then, you know, the normal cramping and, you know, breast tenderness, all of those things. And I think my mood was more of out of the fatigue and the headache of like feeling so crappy. I've never been in particular like heightened and like ragey as Sarah said, but I think it, I think I have, it's just like masked by that fatigue and I'm, you know, like on edge. I'm, I'm like, I'm on edge. I'll snap 
at anything. I'll snap at anything. <laughs> Which I guess is ragey. Maybe I am ragey. I don't know. Yeah. It feels like it stems. You might be, Amy. <laughs> from the fatigue. <laughs> and it's not like, and it's not, and I'm sure you guys can attest to this. It's not like feeling tired. It's not being tired. It's a different fatigue. There's a difference to it. That's like fascinating to me. So that's my experience. Yeah, the headaches, the headaches. I have to say in other circles, I do hear headaches a lot. And I don't know, is there any research into like the spinal column's relationship to uterine organ existence? Like something's going on there. Yeah. There might be. We have to look into that. That I did not come across that. I did a little research for today and I didn't see that. But I remember everything's connected, right? And everything, mm, connected. you know? Yeah. So Mel, knowing that you're in this flux state, how... How can you describe, I guess, what elements of PMS you do show up for you? Yeah, no, I, wish, I mean, I wish listeners could see all of it. They can't because it's a podcast, but everyone's smiling. We're like, Mel? Duh. Everybody's like smiling. You're ready for it. It's like everybody's really excited for me to get back to getting my period. <laughs> it's almost like, you know, that friend that's like, you know, been on vacation for a year and you're like, no, come yeah. back to real life. <laughs> You know, I the thing is, the reason I went on that birth, I was skeptical to go back on birth control, was because my PMS and my periods were so bad. So in a way, I still have that deep remembrance of it, <laughs> even though it's been a year. But I would get such, um, I would get fatigue, but it would drop so fast. And it would be, you know, my, it would just be such a shift where it was like, one, the morning I'd wake up and by the end of the day, it would be like, whoosh, like it, I, I explain it like kind of like blinders where I just can't do much. Like I can't. And it's, it's like, then I think because I'm so drained, then I focus on that and the pain starts to set in. And I always got really achy joints too when I would PMS and that would get me very frustrated (laughs) because then it feels like you're, physical nature. You're like, I can't, I'm not up to speed. It's like, and then um, more recently, actually, when I did go on birth control, I actually started getting, I think my PMS symptoms, even though I wasn't getting a period, were headaches. I started to get light headaches. And then more recently, I've got worse headaches. I'm interested to see if they go away now (laughs) or or just like, they're here to stay, baby. They're here to stay. (laughs) But I think that I am a little bit excited now that I'm off birth control because although it took away a lot of the pain and some of the PMS symptoms, the... I didn't like the way I felt on it. I felt really foggy and it, it brought on a bit of depression because it levels out some of the hormones. So I'm excited to go back, you know, I'm not excited to get my period and have PMS again, but I am looking um, forward to having a more maybe balanced relationship and having a different perspective and a view on how my period is. And and I think, again, with tracking, I just, you know, got an app to track it. And leading up to it, I think, can help me acknowledge when those lows and highs are going to come so I can better take care of myself (laughs) and also have more perspective, even though, you know, who knows? We'll say. (laughs) Sometimes I get ragey. That I I just said I wasn't ragey, and now I'm like, you know, I'm full throttle. (laughs) I'm going ragey. You're also wearing orange. I am. I am wearing orange. Um, I get upset that we. Ha- I feel this too, Mel. That I have. To, it's almost like I have to plan the calendar, and I don't because it's a monthly thing. That's ridiculous. But you know, <laughs> if you look at it, I used to uh, when I was the executive director of a local nonprofit, like an idiot. I scheduled my board meetings right around the time when I would get my period, oh, and no, I was. No. I did it for seven years, and I never changed because you know it's like it's ingrained all of my it's the most important meeting of the month all the things and I felt like death every time every time and I you know I just sometimes I get upset that you know (laughs) we have to like plan life things around it almost in a way um you know I I live with a non-menstruator obvi and like he doesn't have to do that you know and I just sometimes get ragey. 
Right. Well, and, and that kind of, it's thinking about those meetings. And then if that is stressful in any way, that's going to exacerbate your PMS symptoms yes. anyway. Right. So it's like, oh, I have to have the most important meeting and I'm on my period or PMSing. I'm sorry, PMSing. And then it's just going to make everything worse. So for, you were stuck in that cycle for yeah. such a long time. And no one talks about it. No one takes sick days for that, really, unless you're like really ill or and you fake it or something. And so we're just supposed to like endure. Right. And we, I, I do it too. I, I, you know, I don't think it's my employers or anything. Like I did it. I full blown did that to myself. No, I don't know if we're supposed to endure. The thing is, since we're here in the menstrual awareness society that we've like created, <laughs> the, during PMS, everything's heightened. So I, like the lower tolerance and lower patience for bullshit is like a fine skill. I enjoy that skill that shows up at PMS. I'm like, I do not have the patience to endure things I would normally tolerate. The world has been created in this patriarchal system that doesn't, makes it so challenging to both survive in the world and have PMS. But just having PMS is actually a great time to be like, oh, that's what bothers me. Yep. Oh, that's where the issue is in my relationship to myself, to my partner, to my parent, whatever. I'm noticing things a lot more because everything's at the forefront. There's no hiding. And also a reminder to rest. Like, obviously Mm, your body needs like a little, you know, get the nine hours of sleep rather than, you know, your seven or eight or whatever. I I tried to tell myself that a lot (laughs) back in those executive director days. I was like, just remind yourself that your body needs to rest. Yeah, well, we've been conditioned, right? We've been conditioned as Mm -hmm. women since however old you were to endure, make it through. And it's, you know, patriarchal, it can be sexist to like look at it in that fashion, like, oh, you just have to, that's that's your duty because you have a uterus. Like, no, like let's make half of the planet, right? We're sticking to a binary when we're talking about menstruators and non, then half of us are having this and we should just power through. Mm, No, let's change that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Which starts with changing our own self-tracking and scheduling so that we have the limits and the governor of like, oh, mm-hmm. I'm not going to be willing to do something that I don't have to do right. if I can help it when I'm menstruating. Right. What about our relationships with others and those who experience are these, the collective voices here, our experience of PMS? Who else is in your life who experiences PMS with you? And what would they say is the main signal that PMS has begun? Mm. <laughs> I think it's rage. I think my menstruating friends and family that contact me the most probably when they're on their period because they're like, I can't believe this is happening. Can you believe that? It's always <laughs> talk me out, talk me, talk me down right now. And I don't know if there's a correlation. Maybe it's I, I don't know. I feel like it is rage. <laughs> Is it's and I mean, when we say rage, it's more of just the heightened awareness of things, the yeah. no tolerance for bullshit, the wanting to have a companion in this like you know frustrating moment or pain or something. Mm-hmm. Mel made me feel most seen. Actually, we were talking about it months ago, and she told like this story about how she would <clears throat> sit with her husband, <laughs> and sometimes like sh- for no reason at all, like just rage would fill her soul, and she just wanted <laughs> to like punch him in the face. Like I mean, it was just <laughs> so irrational. And I remember like feeling seen. Like oh yeah 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 that I like that happens, to- <laughs> happens all the time. <laughs> Yeah, you I know, generally want to poke, just poke like the, the eyes thing. out. Like, yeah, like you're just like, oh, you, yeah. get out of here. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. And just it's very irrational. And like mm-hmm. the, you know, the wisdom to discern, you know, in those moments of like what is actually going on and like, you know, just your body changing. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm going to go with rage again, right? And I think <laughs> also, yeah, I it's mean, that's theme. probably my theme for today. <laughs> <laughs> and my heightened irritability, and as we were talking about partners, right, I I can see myself and recall, now that I'm thinking about it more succinctly, that I can sometimes hear him making noise, like, but not like anything, like he's not eating, like he's breathing, or like maybe he, <laughs> maybe he's got his finger in his mouth, and I'm like on the That's other it, yes. side of the room, and That's I'm it. like- That's it. I'm like, That's I can it. hear you. Like, I just- That's it. <laughs> Why are you breathing? Why are you chewing on your finger? It's gross. Like, it's just, everything is exacerbated. And I just, like I said, want to poke his eyes out sometimes. 
it almost feels like PMS is a little bit of when a Per, like a superhero just gets their their powers and they don't understand it yet. They don't know that they have them and they don't understand it. And, <laughs> and it's like they haven't used them. And maybe Jessica, that's what you were saying of being like, once we gain control of it, it can right. open up a lot for us. But but we're always, con- it comes and goes. So we're always constantly in that state of like, oh, this is a new superpower, but it's also debilitating. Yes. <laughs> like yes. we hear things, we hear things, we taste things, things are are very like sensitive. We're like spider, like spidey senses. <laughs> Absolutely. I think that's the quote. I, I think that needs yep. to be like the social media quote. A hundred percent. And I'd like it on a t-shirt. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Feels good to me. You're not enlightened about your superpower yet, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. You're like, what yeah. is exactly. happening? Right. <laughs> <laughs> and, and since it comes and goes, we can't like we're like then our bodies just forget it. Like we forget that. Yes. And then it comes back. And we're like, what is this again? <laughs> yes. You know, like it was like just four super, weeks ago. Super. Yes. Gosh. That's feel seen. I've been off birth control for oh, 10 years now. And I just mentioned that because it's taken me a while to get in tune. And maybe I'm not saying, listen, I can't fly. I can't turn invisible, but I've just started to get in tune enough to, instead of feeling maybe the ultimate rage, what happens for my partner is that I want to have a lot more conversations because I'm getting clearer on communicating what's going on in my reactions. So whether or not that's the most fun thing, that's how it shows up in my household. Is like, it's time to talk about a lot more. Oh, something came up. We're going to address what just came up right now. And I'm exercising. It's like a training field for those superpowers. Where is what I need to talk about right now not actually valuable? Where is what I need to talk about something I just need to go meditate on? Where is something I need to talk about something we should have talked about year one? You know, like these are mm-hmm. actual important mm-hmm. relational things, but I do have to figure out and make sure I don't like accidentally put a fireball at my partner mm-hmm. just because I have mm-hmm. the power to, you know? Absolutely. You agree? Absolutely. Yes. It's been, I was, <laughs> it was like TMI a little bit. No, I guess not really. I was single for the majority of my life. I didn't meet my boyfriend, my life partner until I was 38. And I was v- very single, like just dated, you know, blip, never had a, never lived with anybody, you know, all the things. And so my experience of my period was always just this, you know, like personal survival thing that was private. I mean, it just wasn't that big of a deal, really. And so living with somebody was so difficult because I felt so ashamed that I wasn't, I wasn't, 100% all the time. And my boyfriend, those of you that know him, bless, is, you know, 110 energy, like the second he wakes up. I mean, he's just like, bing. And I mean, he's just like projects, which I love because I am kind of not, and it helps balance me out. However, when I'm not feeling well, it is, it was a huge adjustment for me to A, talk to him about it and to be, um, be okay with not being on his level and not feeling guilty that I wasn't on his level. And it happened monthly. And I I really felt like I was kind of worthless almost in a way, which is ridiculous. And this was not him by any stretch of the imagination. It was me. It was my own thing of not being able to keep up with him. And, you know, I think one of the beauties of flow is it has enabled me to talk about it. And it has given, I've talked about it with my mother for the first time ever. (laughs) And my mom was the one that was like, we never talked about any of this stuff. And like in her own circles, in her own friends. And she has, she has a a really intense story that she just never, she never shared. And we, we never did when I was, when I was a teenager. And I think it has just been so powerful, Jay Rich, just like you know, you've kind of um, entered into this new phase of your relationship of, of talking about it being, you know, able to say where you are, for me, it's been important for me to do that and to be okay, to be like, I, you know, I am PMSing here and my body's gonna, I'm asleep for 10 hours. Like it's gonna, it's just gonna happen and I'm just gonna have to let my body do it or whatever. But it's been, it's been a huge adjustment in a, in a good way, but you know, hard (laughs) in a way. (laughs) It's such an interesting paradigm shift to be like, Feeling feeling like there's too much rest in 10 hours versus us as menstruators being like, once a month, I need a little extra sleep. Once, right. once a month. I can like, right. power through so much, but once a month, 
I'm going to catch up and get all that extra sleep. Like, right. What a great resource time. But the system was not created by men- menstruators. Mm-mm. And so that's not enough, like something that's even considered normally. Since we are getting into influences of family members who menstruate and stories of menstruation, let's say either in your own home or in the media, what was your first exposure to what PMS was? I'll say that overall in the media, you know, PMS is the, is, can I say this on flow, the bitch maker, you know, mm-hmm. this rage we're talking about mm-hmm. gets distilled yeah, yeah. into moodiness as opposed to an experience that a woman is having with her own pain, exhaustion, mm-hmm. and experience mm-hmm. of menstruation. 100%. It gets really, yeah, distilled. I think to kind of echo a little bit of what Amy said is we didn't talk about it at my house, which is kind of ironic being a bleeder, myself having a bleeding disorder. It was kind of like, hey, you're going to have a period. But my 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 mother was not someone who struggled with heavy bleeding. I bleed very differently than she does. I bleed very differently than my sister does. And um, so we didn't talk about it. So I think when I was, when I reflect on the question, it was more so for my peers that mm. had maybe started their period before I did that would start talking about PMS and just learning like what that is. Like, oh, I'm just crabby or, oh, I need to eat all the time or, and kind of just getting at more of the symptoms of what, what PMS is. It wasn't getting the education of like, hey, this is what's going to happen for you, right? And distinctly recall being at a girlfriend's house, having to go swimming on my period and trying to figure out a tampon, right? And not knowing like I, it was probably an hour, like trying to figure it out, reading the little packet, right? Like that comes inside the tampon yes. box, right? And being like, but how does that work, right? Like not recalling and then not being and feeling shame, ashamed that I didn't know what to do and that I was on my period and I didn't ask anyone there to help me. So it's kind of like shame and guilt for me, I think. When I think about that. Yeah, I think like we... It's to go back a little bit and then come back, kind of match both of those. <laughs> Jay Rich, there, I think we grew up in a time, I mean, I grew up in the 90s, and it was like such an interesting time to, you know, kind of talk about things, but also still have sort of like odd representation of periods where it's like they could be talked about, but it's still going to be like, you know, it's like, oh, she's PMSing, you know, that 90s male comedian vibe towards it. And so like that really shaped kind of probably my view for, you know, just like taking that in passively. But also at home, we didn't talk about it at all, but I knew about it. You know, I knew. So when I got my period, I knew what it was. I wasn't surprised. I just was like, okay. And I didn't tell anyone. I just went into the bathroom and I was saving, reading the tampon box and being like, you know, this is also one of the first times seeing like a side view of a, like, <laughs> mm. yes. like that diagram of being yes. like, and then being like, where? Okay. Yes. All right. Let's figure this out. Did anybody else and, use a okay. mirror? I used a mirror. No, that no. sounds advanced. I used placement. a mirror and it took me months Months and months, I used Vaseline and a <gasps> mirror. And it was <gasps> like, it was a huge deal. Anyway, Mel, go, go for it. Yeah. Vaseline. <laughs> no, you know what's so Jeez. funny is that like, I wasn't telling anybody that I had my period. I wasn't even telling, you know, I wasn't going to tell my mom. I was like, I'm just going to steal your stuff. Yes. And Mm -hmm. of course, the tampon she's using, she's been, you know, menstruating for years now. So it's like those cardboard thick. And I didn't know there's like a difference in like, uh-huh. You know, I'm not now I look back, I'm like size, whatever, but like in absorbency. So I'm like, probably at the time I was like, I'll take this super plus yep. tampa <laughs> at like 12 yes. and my first period that's like not even that bad. But then I was just like, okay, I'll just use toilet paper. <laughs> like, and I'll just wrap it around my underwear. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then when I I'll try, I used to dance a lot at the time when I would have my period when I dance. I would say like, oh, I just really don't feel well today. I feel, and I have a lot of homework. Like, you know, I was dancing every day. So my mom would be like, okay, whatever. And then that was like when I first got my period, it was very light. So it'd be like one day, you know, and then get by. But yeah, it was not talked about. And I think consumed by uh, the media of what it was and just like, okay, I'll just shove it down. And then I just do it, deal with this. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. When I was reading over these questions and this one popped out, in particular with the pop culture reference, I couldn't think of anything. I mean, just Mm. nothing. Mm -hmm. 
I don't remember anything. And I remember several, you know, pop culture moments in that age, that middle school age that were so resonant to me nothing to do with periods. You know, there was like the the episode uh, with that series, the MTV series, My So-Called Life, which I was yes. like religion uh-huh. to me. She had the pimple. Yes. She had, you remember the pimple one? And I remember yes. being like, that's like a beacon of light. Like this is yes. normal. It's normal to have a pimple, but nothing when it came to this. And my mom, I remember, I knew about it too, Mel. I knew that it was coming out. It didn't freak me out. My mother, bless her heart, she, my mother had, she has a really traumatic story <clears throat> with menstrual health. At the time when I started, she had, she had already had a hysterectomy. So she wasn't bleeding anymore. And, but all she had for me were those big Kotex pads, like, uh, like those big things. That's it. That's all, that's, that's all she had. And she had like, th- they were there. And I, and I don't remember like tampons were just a necessity because I was a dancer too. And it was just like, I had to figure it out and it took me forever. And I just didn't talk about, it. I mean, it was just not discussed. And um, I I think thinking about this question, that it's, it's just more telling to me that there was just such like a vacuum. There was such a void of any conversation about it at all. I mean, just nothing. Nothing about PMS, nothing about how Mm -hmm. it would influence, you know, my sexual relationships. It was just, it was absolutely nothing. And I, and I was oblivious. I I wasn't like struggling in it. I was oblivious. Mm -hmm. I wonder, I wonder, I think, because we all grew up in similar times, you know, give or take a few years, right? That, so I read too that PMS itself wasn't really popular term until the 80s, until there was mm. some article in Family Circle magazine, if you all recall, yes. from the time, wow. Wow. right? Right? <laughs> and that they, so thinking about that, like, because I, early 90s started my period. So that article only came out in the 80s. What were our mothers, right? Like, it sounds like they all have different, very different stories. What were they going through, right? What was what's the history of them understanding what was happening to their bodies? And they're just now getting some language for it when they have these little, you know, at that point, you know, we're all pretty young. So it's, it's a really interesting thing to think about, like what, what generational still, information is coming down. Yeah, still so, still so new to be dialoguing about it. That's what we're doing here on Flow. And in yes. fact, I want to ask us as a workshop, how would we describe what PMS is to a young one, to someone who's just about to start menstruating or even younger? I think I would <laughs> I would go back to the What Are Hormones episode of Flow and <laughs> re-up season one, mm-hmm. check it out. Explain a little bit what hormones are and how they are. They can affect our bodies so much. And I think in, with PMS in particular, I would want to describe or to, you know, I think almost encourage that there's going to be a variety of of symptoms. And it's like your first learning lesson of how to listen to your body. And it's going to be, it's different for everybody. And having a healthy conversation with you know, women that you trust, menstruators you trust, friends you trust about what their experiences are will maybe set you up to to in the future if something, you know, it's going to it's going to change throughout your life. You know, you're going to have, you know, you're going to mess with your hormones. You might do birth control or something. You know, those hormones are so delicate and they're different with everybody and this is your first lesson of listening to your body. I guess just to acknowledge and to empower yourself that you know, listen to your body if you feel tired. Let's Let's talk about it. Let's figure out how to get you some rest, you know, and maybe you'll feel better, you know, sooner rather than like pushing through. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Of course. So we know that we are on Flow Straight Talk about extreme periods and we've done so much dialoguing. I'm like sensitive to time, but I just want to take one moment to make sure we touch upon a little bit more of the extreme element. You know, PMS can of course be PMDD. PMS experienced by patients with endometriosis or PCOS is a totally different experience. What is the most extreme PMS symptom that you've seen, experienced, or witnessed? Mm. Witnessed or experienced? I recall 
There were two, I went to a very small high school. I, you know, generally half of us, half of the class were, were girls, were menstruators. And I, there were two friends of mine that had endo, I think, but probably wasn't diagnosed at that point. Them just falling asleep in class, having a heating pad, needing to leave, missing a lot of school, just verbally, oh my God, I am in so much pain and just being debilitated. And they were both active in sports. Um, but it was also, it ended up becoming kind of a norm for us to see throughout our high school experience together because they were, they both struggled and they were both very good friends of mine to see them go through that and what it was like. I think before I went on this birth control again, I had such a bad period and all I could explain it was that it, it felt like there was someone with like needles and it was like different than cramps at this point. I felt like it got to a point where I felt something else was wrong with me. Like there's not, it can't just be the cramps and things like, or it can't just be my period. God, it cannot. I have to have something terrible or terribly wrong with me. But I think that, you know, in a way I'm not glad it got to that point, but I think it got so unbearable that I had to advocate for myself and say like, this is not, to me, this is not normal. This pain shouldn't be endured. You know, at this point it was like lasting two weeks out of the I can't, do that. And so in a way, getting to that extreme pain and all of the other symptoms that come along with it allowed me to then just really try and find a doctor I really liked, advocate for myself, and just like take a course and become more in control than just passively dealing with it. Another extreme was I went to all girls high school. So it was actually, that's the point where we all talked about her periods. It wasn't uncommon, but I remember a girl getting her period through her uh, her skirt, and it it was like very bad, and, and it's all girls, so we were like, oh no, you know, nobody was like everybody, even if you like, you know, the cattiness. Not to say girls, but at the time it was just like a very like a, you know different age, the thirteen. But everybody was like, no, we all understood, and we were like, that'll never come out of that wool skirt. <laughs> like, <laughs> Those wool thinking skirts. Thinking about like these, oh, it's oh. done, and it's like we were like, oh, her mom's gonna be so upset. She's gonna have to buy a new skirt. <laughs> oh. But I remember being like, think seeing that of one of my friends and seeing like, oh, that's our lives. That's our lives now, you know? And that was like an extreme period for like, I think we were like 14 or 15, but still like, you know, being like, that's what we're living in. <laughs> and then getting to my own point with it. I think my extreme period symptoms, definitely the the headaches that I couldn't explain and that weren't... I think coupled with the fact that I couldn't like count or schedule or, you know, count on anything. I mean, they just weren't the same. Nothing has ever been the same. And so like sometimes I would be very definite of like, yes, this is, you know, this is a hormone headache. You know, I'm going to have this headache for three days and it's, this is how it's going to move through my body. And, you know, I can, I can count on that, but it, it just never would. And then it would pop up randomly later it's are are there other things i tried other drugs you know all these things so i think not to discount you know i i don't have i don't i have never had the symptoms of somebody with endo i have never had like extreme symptoms where the the, pa- the actual pain has been so bad that i've had to stop something i've had cramps where i just want to stay in bed and you know i feel terrible but i think the extreme for me is almost it feels normal is just, I, I, you know, it just, it just feels like a shot in the dark. Like, I don't know. I don't know. Mm. I'm on an IUD now. I I said that. And just recently I've, I'm I'm not experiencing, knock on wood, I'm not experiencing headaches anymore. Mm. And three years into the IUD and there's, you know, there, there's a little piece of me that's like, is that it? Is that because of the IUD? I mean, they tell you you're not going to have a period, but I still have, I still have the symptoms. You know, I still have the random things, always different. So it just feels like, you know, you can't control your body, which, which, you know, we we can't. So it's just learn, it's learning, learning how to release that control almost in a way and listening better. But it just, it feels, it can feel exhausting. 
like you have a handle on it one month and then, you know, you just lose your mind the next. The extreme inconsistencies, which was your word from the start, does sound like that's a whole other unknown mystery roller coaster of not so fun ride to take. And I guess I should ask y'all, do you guys, are you guys consistent? Is it very consistent? You're like, oh, I have these things. In symptoms, you mean? Is that? Yes. Mm, I think so for me. I think it's the rage as we've, obviously my theme of today. It's the rage of everybody today. (laughs) We might call the episode rage. Rage. (laughs) Yes. Rage with the flow ladies. I will, I will say my most extreme experience was when I thought I was having endo symptoms. And because I understand what they are and they exist, it was like, that must be what it is. And so I didn't get treated for a UTI for a while <gasps> because oh. I just accepted that the pain that was happening oh, no. was a PMS thing I should just <sighs> probably have to cope with for my life. So I did get treated. Everything was fine. This was several years ago. But it was that allowance of the extreme experience and the tolerance of it that almost led me to organ injury. Like, no, nuts. Oh my gosh. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention that I know so many women who suffer from the PMDD component of the psychological strain that comes along Mm -hmm. with handling the physiological experience, handling experiencing that in the world as it is right now. Um, It's truly traumatic I've seen, I've seen and heard people in the most traumatic places of their psychological place with PMDD. Mm-hmm. And we just need more. We need more of this. We need more talking to bring it up so that it's not scary to talk about even when the experience is extreme. We should probably wrap it up, I All reckon. Right. Any last things we do want to mention for episode content? As always, this is wonderful. It's just good to talk about it. It's so lovely to talk about it. It's important to do. It's been a blast. The next meeting of the yes. Menstrual Awareness Society. <laughs> <laughs> menstrual we, Awareness. We go out in a puff of smoke. <laughs> that would be great. Yeah. That's super Or pop of menstrual blood, like yeah. Carrie. But oh, yes. Just a little blood. Yeah, I love that. Oh, we need it. Can we get a t-shirt with all of this on it? Like, can I have like, yes. a hoodie? <laughs> yes. Flow merch. Great. Flow merch. Flow merch. That was fun. Sarah, you know, I said it at the top, I really like introducing you as Sarah Watson, sex therapist. I love it. Isn't that cool? I, and as a sex therapist and educator, are there any specific mm. PMS-related issues that come up repeatedly on your couch through your mm. teleconference? Things that folks might be worried about regarding PMS that, is it normal? Is it not normal? So we can have up to a hundred symptoms of PMS. <sighs> So, <laughs> right, yeah, let's digest that 100, uh-huh. 100. right? 100. 99 problems. <laughs> no, if you have PMS, and, you have 100 problems. <laughs> it's like Boy. 99 problems and PMS is one, right? Mm. It's also identifying what is PMS and how that impacts the relationship for you because that's also going to change, could change, I won't say it will, but could change month to month and maybe your relationship is kind of cycling in that capacity where Maybe you have a very stressful time and have an argument very consistently during that time, depending on where you are in your mood due to PMS. If we can tie that together, then we can figure out how to work with your PMS instead of working against it. Right. What were you mentioning about stress? So stress at the time of PMS, it just increases the PMS. Yep. Sadly, it does. Stress is really not good for us at all, right? So it's going to increase your PMS symptoms. It's also going to decrease your ability to think about desire and arousal. Mm. So if you are feeling stressed, we need to figure out, you need to figure out what's going to be best for you to decrease that as much as possible. But stress is going to increase your PMS and that's very typical. Stress, I am not... uh keen on all the terminology of anatomy, but cortisol gets released, right, when we get stressed, and that does things to our body. Even if we're not in an actual stressful situation, our body doesn't know. It just reacts with, like, an extreme amount of cortisol, and that does Mm -hmm. things all over, Yeah, let alone to our uterus and area Mm -hmm. while menstruating, while PMSing, while getting ready to menstruate. Right. We have to think about going back to that idea of there can be a hundred symptoms so stress can also impact your, if you have acne, if you struggle with acne or bloating, and like all of it goes together, weight gain, cravings, mm. 
headaches, those dreaded back aches. If you're one of those people that struggle with back aches, so stress, like it's just going to wreak havoc on us. And let's now, are there yeah. are there a hundred? There's a hundred symptoms. I'm just thinking, are there a hundred mm-hmm. management techniques? How how do you deal with a hundred different <laughs> symptoms? I'm not sure. There's a hundred management techniques, but there are some that come to mind. One would be first and foremost. Make sure that you are seeing a provi- a healthcare provider that knows you, that understands menstrual bleeding. Making sure that you have a good rapport with your doctor, with your um, gynecologist, your OB, and that they can just make sure everything is on track for where it could, where it should be typically. Stress management, obviously, that's mm. going to be high up on the list. Um, relaxation, getting into something, being more mindful, maybe yoga, gentle walks, like not pushing your body to the extreme during PMS. Nutrition, I'm not saying you need to, you know, do anything extreme in any capacity, but they do recommend to increase your water, to mm-hmm. decrease the salt, be mindful of your caffeine intake and your alcohol mm-hmm. use. If you are someone who drinks alcohol or drinks caffeine, which I do all the time, well, not the alcohol all the time, but caffeine all the time, being mindful of that. Exercise, gently remembering we're going to be gentle then if you are having lower stress you're not feeling super stressed that you can plan to have sex sex can be something that can relieve some symptoms can create connection with your partner and knowing that it can be therapeutic and as long as you're not stressed and you're not tired like if you're feeling really tired overwhelmed don't push that with your partner that is going to increase your symptoms Mm, but so it's totally normal to have sex while PMSing? Totally normal as long as you're in the right headspace. Do of it. Course. Do it. Have fun. Totally normal. Totally normal. You're totally, absolutely normal. Mm, normal. Totally normal. Have fun. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about PMS, that time that needs extra management. Mm-hmm. And it's a time that happens for how many years in our life? A couple decades? Three decades? At least. Decades. At least, depending on your genetic makeup and what's going on in your family, right? And so then we move into menopause, which can be a long road, right? We have to remember that that can, it's not all of a sudden, right? Like the light switch flips on and you're in menopause. But when you get there, right, when you're not having active menstruation anymore, there's a bonus. You don't have PMS anymore. Huh. Huh. Let's put those together. Yes. So there's a lot of thoughts and feelings around menopause. But let's add this little highlight, right? That that week or longer of PMS, goodbye. It's gone. No more menstruation. No more Mm premenstrual period time. Yeah. No more premenstrual time. Menopause, man. I think the wisdom that must come from being aware, you know, when we're 12, 13, 14, and our body changes one way, we're still learning about Mm -hmm. the entire world and growing in height and whatnot. But Mm -hmm. at the time of menopause, being able to have more of a grip of the world and experience such a physiological change sounds kind of So securing yourself, hopefully, right? And being like, okay, this is who I am. This is where I am. This is what's happening to my body. Mm. Let's look at, you know, I think, I think we're both talking about looking at this not as a huge, heavy burden, but just part of our lives. And how do we, how do we incorporate that and, and treat ourselves kindly and warmly and, and do what we can to take care of ourselves? And continue to share about it so that we can each individually and collectively learn. All of what you just said would have been great to hear in sex ed, in physical education, as we know it formally in Mm -hmm. uh, K through 12 in America. Physical education, a.k.a. sex ed, but there there was a lot we didn't get. It would have been great to hear that. I also would have loved to have heard about Emily Martin in the 80s. Emily Martin explains that it was the industrial workplace demanding of the body continual work energy, to quote, therefore the less work energy that accompanies normal biological time of PMS was seen as an illness. 
it wasn't always considered an illness, PMS. And of course, we know PMDD and other extreme conditions Mm -hmm. are things that need to be managed at a higher level. But in general, baseline PMS Mm -hmm. was not an illness until the industrial workplace said, hey, a five-day work week is what's normal and any less work energy in a human is seen as an illness. So if you think if you have, right, if you have PMS for like a week or longer, right, then how is that impacting? And then like, what did, you know, how's that biologically, you should be Mm -hmm. able to go rest for a week. It shouldn't be a Mm -hmm. game of trying to make your body do more than it can and wants to do during that time. Yet here we are. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Still here, right? And so now it's taking that information. What can you do in your day to day, especially during that time that you're PMSing, to to help yourself and not just kind of shove it down? Like it's not like oh I'm PMSing again, whatever. It's oh I'm PMSing again. How can I honor my body? How, How can, can I, I honor, honor what I'm feeling? Right. Oh. right. Um. I am so grateful to be talking about this with you, and I'm really looking forward to next month when we tune in to mega focus on the big show part of the cycle, (laughs) menstruation, (laughs) menses, the time of blood. Here's to more menstrual fun in March on Flow. Bloodstream Media is more than just a rare disease podcast network. With shows on chronic pain, menstrual health, and Dungeons and Dragons, Yes, Dungeons & Dragons. Bloodstream Media's got a little something for everyone. Visit bloodstreammedia.com or find Bloodstream Media on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram to learn more. Flow is produced by Bloodstream Media and supported by Takeda. Shout out to Flow's creative director, Amy Board, and Flow's host, Jessica Richmond. That's me and Christy Van Horn. Our next episode will be available December 9th. Hey! That's the day after I start menstruating. <laughs>